Ciao everyone, welcome. I'm Stefania and I'm a certified yoga teacher. This class is suitable also for those people who usually rely on a tutor or an assistant to say help them in you know standing up or sitting down. However, if you want to practice with this person next to you, of course it's totally fine. If you have a yoga block or a thick book, I always say the Lord of the Rings by talking because I think that everybody should have that book in their home. Leave me a comment if you agree. If you don't have the block or a thick book, that's fine, it's just to add a bit of uh, chili flavor to the practice. If you will never ever practice any physical activities, I'm not talking about just yoga, just whatever type of uh, physical activity, so if you are pretty sedentarian as a person, you might find this practice a bit challenged, so if you're tired, if it's and like the pace is too fast or whatever, slow down, take breaks. If you're practicing and now it is summertime and it's hot while you're practicing, make sure to have some fresh air maybe coming to from an open window or some sort of ventilation. I do have some windows open and that's why you probably uh, might hear some noises from the outside, there are all the kids are playing outside, as well as having some fresh water, possibly magnesium and potassium for after class. All right, we are ready to start. So we start standing on our feet, feet, hips and apart, nice stance. This portion is called Tadasana in Sanskrit, meaning the mountain pose. Let's try to keep our spine in a neutral position, so without the overarching or overrounding. Same for our head, maybe chin slightly uh, tucked in, kind of parallel to the floor. If you're okay with it, you can close your eyes completely or keep a soft, relaxed gaze on the floor just in front of you. And we take a moment to fully arrive on our inner landscape. Maybe you know yoga is not only a body work, some sort of workout, it's also a somatic experience. So we get to know our body to feel or maybe notice if we don't feel our body or certain areas of the body. Yoga is also a practice of awareness, of practicing of being present and mindful. So please acknowledge when you get distracted, maybe thinking, remembering or planning. And see if you can choose to bring your mind back inside your body, perhaps not seeing your breathing. Now place your awareness on your feet in this contact between the feet and the ground beneath. Maybe you have the floor, maybe a yoga mat, whatever it is. And start noticing if you are equally distributing your body weight on your feet or perhaps you have the tendency in standing more on the outer edges or maybe vice versa on the inner edges of your feet. Perhaps you have more body weight over your toes or on your heels. No need to change anything, just your knowledge. And see how this type of posture affects the other part of your legs. Maybe the inside of your legs, maybe your ankles, maybe you feel it more in the calves, all the way up to your glutes and your lower back. and open your eyes if you haven't already. And keeping your posture, we start voluntarily to shift our body weight toward the edges of our feet, right and left. And then we start shifting the body weight forward and backwards, so toward the toes, on the heels. Noticing how these 
affect our posture, how we need to find again a, a center of equilibrium or balance. And maybe taking it into circles, choose the direction, maybe right to left or the other way around. And again, notice how these affect the muscles that are engaged in our legs and then all the rest of the body. If you feel like you're getting dizzy, please keep the gaze, it's called Dristi in Sanskrit, on the floor in front of you. Reverse the direction of your circles. And now slowly and mindfully see if you can have a bit of quality in this transition from making circles of, uh, starting from our feet, we start making circles in our hips. So it's not like the feet are glued to the floor, everything is connected in our body, actually everything is connected in the world, but let's say for the holistic experience in our body. So of course the feet and the ankles are responding to this movement, but the movement is initiated by our hips. It can be a subtle, really small movement, small circles, or it can be a wider range of motion here in the hips. Notice how does it feel for you? Maybe it's a bit awkward, maybe it's great. We tend to be a bit stiff and stuck in our hips because of the posture, because of our lifestyle, we sit all the time in front of a computer, or most of the time. Also there is a bit of, um, I would say, social pressure or shame in moving the hips while we are moving. Let's change the direction of the circles. You can play around also with your pace, so maybe from slow to fast or vice versa. Let's place the feet together. Just take a moment here to acknowledge how does it feel now to have your feet together. Notice that where is your body weight now? Toward the outside, toward the inside? Are you engaging maybe the inner tight muscles? Maybe you feel it also in your glutes. And then we start bending the knees. Nothing too fancy and no need to go for a deep squat to just as we started the class. And we start making circles again from the ankle. So your knees basically are um, painting circles in the air. Again, small or big circles. This might be a big challenge if you don't have a good dorsification, which is flexing the feet. So if this is the case, Discomfort is good, pain is never good, so if there is pain, please stay higher up. And let's change the position, sorry, the direction of the circles. Don't forget to breathe. You can exhale through your mouth if you like, with this a bit of tension from the throat and the jawbone area in this way. And now, if you do have a block or the Lord of the Rings, please tap with your right foot on the block. If you don't have it, no worries, you can do the same, placing all your body weight on your right leg. If you are stepping on the block, please come up, so you have probably the left foot that is slightly uh, elevated from the floor. And now we start swinging the left leg back and forward. Allow the left knee to bend a bit and see if you are following the same pattern all over, so you just go straight or see if you can unleash a bit the mobility in the hips, especially in this case in the, on the left side, so that the left leg is actually going a bit toward the left, toward the right, kind of making half circles or swinging, making spirals. So you don't really control the movement as in uh, imposing to your left leg to go straight back and forward. At the same time, of course, you do control in terms of, you know, um, having the balance, especially if you are on the block, and avoiding to 
go over the boundaries of your muscles. So we don't want to pull any muscles here, okay? <laughs> All right, and then let's see if we can go a bit wider with the range of motion. So it's not really the pace, the pace can stay steady, slow and steady if you like, or faster, something that is fine for you. But we want to elevate a bit more the left leg. So maybe bending the left knee when you have the leg in front of you. And maybe engaging a bit the um, glutes when you have your left foot behind you. All right. Next time you have the left foot in front of you, bend the left knee, try to elevate. So we activate the psoas muscles that links the lower body to the upper body. Maybe the knee is not elevated like mine, maybe it's like a lower down, maybe it's all the way up. If it's all the way up, just check with your hips. We try to keep the hips at the same level, so don't collapse toward the right side, going into side flexion. It's not what we're doing here. Ooh, and then let's come down, or just release if you don't have the block. And give a nice shake to your legs. Now you should feel it a bit, not only in the hips, a bit of mobility and openness in the hips, <coughs> but also in the right calf. All right, let's see how it goes on the other side. So just move your block, if you have the block or the book, let's step on it. Or if you don't have it, just place all your body weight on the left leg. And let's start swinging the right leg. Also, if you have a big foot, this is something that sometimes I have a comment. Uh, you know, one block is not enough for my big foot. Yeah, true. So either you challenge yourself because the block is small, or maybe use two blocks or two books, of course. All right, we start again acknowledging if you're following the same pattern. And see if we can allow a bit of movement and freedom in the right hip. We start increasing the range of motion, so bending the right knee in front of you, elevating a bit. So we start engaging those psoas, engaging the glutes when you have the right foot behind you. And then next time, right knee up, either. 90 degree or less, maybe more. Again, if you go higher up, check with your hips. Don't go into side flexion. Almost done. And let's step down and give a nice shake to the legs. Nice. Now from our position, we want to just uh, so we come back to Tadasana. From our position, left knee up. So as we did just now. This time we open the left knee toward the left. Mm, hold it here. And then slow motion. Imagine that you are on the moon. Let's step slowly and mindfully. The left foot behind us. Doesn't have to be far away. When the toes touch the floor, acknowledge this contact. One toe at a time, and then the ball of the foot just goes slightly forward. And maybe some of you can go also with the back heel on the floor. To have the back heel on the floor might be a bit tricky, especially on the calf muscles and hamstrings as well. So if it doesn't happen, that's fine. You stay with the back heel up. Either come in completely square with your hips, so it's a, a lounge position. Or if you lack again on, on the dorsification, you can use, uh, for instance, a pillow or a double fold blanket underneath the heels. So you elevate, and so there is not so much of dorsification, right, in, your, in the left foot. And you can stay more in this uh, position that open a bit, opens a bit the hips. This is the variation of the warrior one, the Rabadrasana one. The front knee can be slightly bent, or maybe you can go for a wider stance, so just walk your right foot in front of you, and then bend more. Acknowledge your spine, 
maybe you have the tendency like me to go into a sort of backbend, so overarching, like the banana shape as I'm doing now, now I'm kind of emphasizing. If this is the case, see if you can actually move a bit your hips and adjust your uh, spine. So it is like in a kind of neutral position. It's natural to have a sort of initiation of the backbending warrior one, which is even amplified if, you know, uh, when you practice in the yoga studio with people with their arms up. All right, almost done, eh? All right, so now other way, heel on the floor or heel up, all the body weight on the front leg, so right leg, slowly and mindfully, as we enter, we go out. So open with the left hip, the left knee pass in front of you, and we start twisting. So the upper body, remember twist happen in the thoracic spine, so in the middle, more or less, of the spine. T12 is the vertebra. So we start twisting, don't overcompensate please with either hips or shoulders, so start twisting, maybe slightly, maybe have a good rotation in your spine, the neck can follow, but if you just turn your neck where you have a good, you know, mobility in the cervical spine, that's not really twisting, so it's okay to rotate the neck, but uh, it's not the thing that we are focusing on, we are focusing on the thoracic spine. All right, let's come back to our center with the spine. Let's release the left foot on the floor, maybe give a nice shake to the legs. We come back to Tadasana, other side. Right knee up toward your belly. Open toward the right. Slow motion. We step the right foot back. So all the body weight on the left leg. Slowly, slowly, the right big toe touch the floor, then the other toes. Then see how it is on this side, maybe right knee down on the right heel down on the floor. What do you want? Or maybe we stay square, right heel up in the lounge position. Again, adjust the distance in between the feet. If you want to work a bit more on your legs, then separate your feet wider apart. And again, check with your spine. Let's try to keep it in a neutral position. It's okay if, if you are in warrior one, your hips will open a bit toward the right. That's fine. Don't insist in squaring them unless there is enough mobility to do so without twerking the right knee. Okay, we stay here one more breath. And then we shift all the body weight to the front leg, the left one. As we enter, we go out, right knee, bend, open toward the right, coming back toward the center, stay, and then from the thoracic spine, we start twisting the center toward the right. Again, don't cheat, so don't move your hips, don't move the shoulders, and yes, the neck is following, so you can do a bit more of rotation in your neck, so you look more toward your right shoulder. Don't go over the angle, so don't just look all the way behind you is really not necessary. Hold it here, almost done. Let's come back, lower the center, release the right leg down, let's do a shake. Nice. Go for a couple of balancing poses because why not? They are great for our brain, for, for focusing our mind. They are usually quite challenging and this time I, I want to challenge myself and you even more. So if you do have the block or the thick book, please use it. We step on the right side, so right foot on the block. Left knee moving up. Open toward the left, holding here. Actually I'll turn so you can see me better. Holding here. And then place the left foot wherever it comes on your right leg. So maybe all the way up toward your pubic bone or all the way down, more toward uh, the shin, or maybe all the way down on the block or if you're not using the block or if you're struggling on the block, just come down and then you can place the left foot on the floor, keeping the hip opening. This is Vikrasana, the tree pose. 
So the hips are opening in opposite direction. So if the left knee, you see that your left knee is kind of pulling in, so this is the opposite, always respecting the body. If you're uh, pulling or yeah, toward the left, so with the left knee, notice if the right hip is kind of following, right? Trying to compensate. And remember, you want to open in opposite direction. Okay, let's come back with the left knee. Keep it up. We go for equal pose, Garudasana. So left knee on top of your right one. Now maybe you have the capacity to link your left foot on your right calf. Many people actually sit like that, which is crazy, right? If not, you can just uh, leave the left knee on top of the right one, or if you're down on the floor, you can place the left foot also on the floor. Check with your hips if they are moving, in this case, toward your right. See if you can bring them back in position. So we are really just using the abduction in the hip. If you want to work more, you squat down. So bend both knees. Remember to breathe. If you lose the balance, don't make any shot of it. Maybe try again and see if you can focus a bit more placing your gaze on the floor, something that is not moving. All right, let's come up. And leash one leg at a time. Come down if you're on the block with a nice shake. Whew. We go on the other side. If you have the block, step on the block with the left foot. Right knee up, 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 and then open toward the right. And then again, we place the right foot wherever it comes, all the way up, something in between, or all the way down on the block or on the floor. Three pose again. Notice the right knee is opening, pulling toward the right. But your left hip is not following this one in the other direction. Right. And then we come back with the right knee, keep it up. Eagle pose, right knee on top of the left one. Again, maybe some of you can um, interlace the right foot on the left calf. If it's not for you, then stay just one knee in front of the other or right foot on the floor. Step down on the block to do so. You can stay up or scroll down. <laughs> you feel it in the glutes. You are stretching them. You are using a bit of engagement in the quads. The left calf is screaming. Get me out. <laughs> Alright, let's come up. Release the right leg and step down and give a nice shake. Alright, now we open the legs. On a V shape, doesn't have to be spectacular. Let's try to keep the feet parallel to each other. Now, from this position, we go for a forward fold. We start with 90 degrees, so the torso is parallel to the floor. Look down on the floor. If you if you have the arms and um, they are kind of floating in front of you, just keeping them in front of you, uh, they might even help you actually with the balance. In here, see if you have all your body weight back on your heels. See what happens if you challenge yourself carefully in here. So you give a bit more body weight toward your toes. You can practice if you are uncertain of this one. You can practice with a wall just in front of you. So you hit the floor, uh, sorry, the wall uh, with your head slowly and mindfully, obviously. All right, and then let's go for a full forward fold. So allow the spine to release toward your legs, toward your lap. Try to keep your spine nice and straight to begin with, so don't round your spine if possible. Straighten the spine here. And then we bend both knees, so we go into a nice squat. Try again to keep your spine nice and straight in here. I'll show you also on this side, that makes more sense. Again, notice if you have all your body weight on your heels, if you can distribute a bit more equally. So also something in your toes. Okay. And then we extend once again the legs. And then we start twisting toward the right. 
again from the thoracic spine so don't go just with the shoulders and with the neck from the thoracic spine maybe it's just a few millimeters toward the right that's fine looking up toward your right shoulder back toward the center straight spine and twist toward your left and back toward the center Bending both knees, back to the squat, almost done. And let's release, coming up, hop your feet, give a shake. If you will spin, we come back to our nice Tadasana, feet, hips in apart. We start with the next side, flexion toward the right. So the chest is opening toward the ceiling, don't close, don't round your spine. You can allow the neck either to hang in here or a bit of activation, so resist the gravity in here. And then come up. We go on the other side, slowly and mindfully. Notice your hips, they are not moving or slightly moving, it's okay, of course, it's, everything is linked. Notice if one side comes easier than the other one. Uh, let's come back up. We'll put one more time on the first side. Over your chest, opening your jawbone, sliding the jawbone right and left. And then closing your mouth, come back toward the center, chin up toward the ceiling, don't uh, hang in here, so engage a bit the front and uh, neck muscles, look up toward the ceiling or toward the sky. And then come back toward the center, right here toward your right shoulder. Notice how the other side, so the left side of your neck is doing. And then let's come up, other side, left here toward the left shoulder. You can notice you know, how the opposite side of the neck is doing. Notice also if you're creating unnecessary tension in the face, maybe contracting the teeth. Or maybe the forehead. And let's come back toward the center. Start looking toward the right shoulder. Stay mindful of your posture, of your standing in Tadasana. And back toward the center. We go all the way on the other side. We are noticing if you are equally distributing the body weight on your feet, how is your spine neutral position or otherwise and then back toward the center we start making circles with the neck and reverse the direction of the circles and then slowly come back toward the center Take a moment in here, maybe again closing the eyes or keep a soft relaxed gaze on the floor in front of you. Let's take together three deep and conscious breaths. In and in through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. In and in. Exhale in. In and in. Exhale in. Come back to your regular breath. Lokasa Masa Sukino Babantu. May all beings be happy and free. And may my thoughts, words, and actions contribute somehow to this happiness and freedom for all. Slowly open your eyes if you haven't already. Thank you so much for practicing with me.
I hope you like this class. I wish you well. See you next time. Ciao. Thank you.